God was using her testimony to minister to me that from such nobility, a strong religious Christian background, yes, if she can go through this and still trust God, then each and every one of us should know that whatever you are going through, you are not alone. People of faith have been through, but the difference is they trusted God through the process. I'll give the name out just to help somebody who probably may, might be going through a similar situation. Her name is Ruth Graham. Ruth Graham. She just wrote a book about forgiving his father and forgiving herself and also learning to forgive God. She is this Christian lady whose father was Billy Graham. And she had to go through three, four marriages which did not work out well. But how can you, how can you say this? How can you go through this? Your father. Everybody goes through problem. Everybody. Don't be deceived. Everybody. If you don't have a problem, then it means there's no need for a God. Because somehow for Christians, for believers, it is many times problems that drives us to look for God. It is problem that causes us to rely and to be more dependent on God. Some of you are so much, my problem, my problem, my problem, and heaven is so rejoicing. Heaven is so rejoicing that you've been given yourself your problem because that's the only reason why you are now seeking after God. That's why you are now searching for God. That's why you are now relying on God. That's when now you've learned to depend on God. That's why you are now zealous for God. It's because of the problem. It's because. So your problem does not, it's, it's not a problem to heaven. Heaven rejoices because for the first time in your life, you found your purpose and your source of strength. Because until the problem, we were reliant, oh, my husband, oh, my job, oh, my health, oh, my money. We were placing our confidence on, on material and human beings until everything around us was shaking. And people around you could not help you. The very husband you were so much into betrayed you, disappointed you, cheated on you. The very so-called friends you were so attached to betrayed you. The position, the job that you had, that you were so confident in. There was a lockdown, a shutdown, and the job had to let you go. And then you realize that, wow. It is God who keeps and preserves and sustains. Not man or not institutions or jobs or professions. You can make all the money. And in a twinkle of an eye, it will all disappear. You can have all the breakthroughs. And by one diagnosis, <laughs> your life will slip through your hands. And lose everything to people who did not even do nothing to inherit your wealth. Such is life. And many times too, problems will test whether you truly love God. Because many times problems will drive people away from God. 
But those who really genuinely love the Lord, problems drives them to God. Problems will test whether you really trust God or you genuinely see God. Is it just because of what you can get from him or because you truly love him? Sometimes God will allow problems to happen, to prove to the devil that let's see whether this lady or this woman, her confidence is in her husband, her riches, her position, her job, her finances, or is in me. Problems comes to test us. And sometimes to even reveal to you, yourself, what kind of people are surrounding you. Until the problem comes, everybody is your friend. Everybody likes you. Everybody is taking from you. Everybody says that they are in for you. But when you are in problems, a friend in need is a friend indeed. You begin to know your true friends. Those who stick with you, stand with you through the face of your challenges. Problems. Everybody goes through something. But we have to learn to trust God. I'm saying this because some people are so downed. Oh Lord, you didn't do this for me. You didn't do that for me. What about the life? What about the health? What about you being alive? There's, there's somebody, all they wish was that their loved one was around. They don't need nothing. They don't care about marriage or money or what. They wish somebody dear to them died because of COVID, died of cancer, died of accident, died mysteriously, died of mis. So please, Everybody goes through something. But you must turn to God. The fact that your expectations or your prayer request has not been met yet, the question is yet, doesn't mean God has forsaken, abandoned, or forgotten about you. And some of us, our faith is under trial. It's been tested to see the genuineness of our faith. Because God has not answered your prayer, would you still love him? With all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. Because God hasn't answered your prayers, would you still hold on to his word, hold on to his promises? Even though God has not visited you yet, would you still serve him? Would you still pray again? Would you still trust him again, give again? Would you still hold on to your God? Or would you be like Job's wife in the face of adversity and challenges and problems, turns her back against God and encourages the husband, why don't you curse God and die? What is our heart? So because you couldn't receive that breakthrough, that job, that marriage, that blessing, are you going to walk away from God? Are you so discouraged that now the devil is telling you, why waste your time go on that prayer? For what? Why waste your time fast? For what? Why waste your time live a holy life? For what? Would you join Job's wife in saying, let me, let me forget about God and do my own things? If that relationship didn't work, let me have my own way. Sleep around, find me anybody and marry and just move on. Would you trust God? Our faith is under trial. And when you pass the test, Though temporarily or now, it may seem as though you've lost, you have nothing, you have achieved nothing from God. God has forsaken you, abandoned you, neglected you. Those who hold on fast to their faith in God, even in the face of trial, 
just as Jesus Christ was placed in the tomb, first day, second day, and the devil and the demons and the they were all rejoicing that he's dead. It's done. It's over. But what they didn't know that there was going to be a visitation on the third day. What the devil didn't know that though he had stripped off Job of everything he had, including his health, his children, his estate, his finances, his properties, yet God was going to visit Job again and restore him and give him double for every trouble he has been through. Just because this month didn't favor you, this week didn't favor you, this year didn't favor you, is it the reason why you are trying to turn your back on God? Your faith is under trial. Because sometimes the very things you are believing and trusting God for, you can experience silence, a season of silence. A season of what? Silence, as though heaven is quiet on you. God does not even hear you, and God doesn't care about you. And Jesus, our Savior and Lord, even went through that season of silence. Until he cried, Eli, 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 my God, my God, my God, Labasat. Lama sabatani, labasat, whatever it is, lama sabatani, my God, my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? Lama sabatani, why? Jesus was crying to God that why have you, when I need you most, you forsaken me? In his flesh, but God had not forsaken him. And we all go through it. And some people are so downcast. But I came to encourage you. Jesus went through a season of discouragement. Lama Sabatani. Why have thou forsaken me, my God? I thought you would come in with your host of angels and rescue me. So I don't have to go through this. And God was silent. 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 A season of silence. Whereby nothing is working and everything is quiet and nobody seems to care about your condition. No help is coming from nowhere. Nobody is coming to your rescue. Everybody is giving excuses why they can't help you. Your, your faith is being tried. Would you pass in your silence season? Then there's a season of delay. You are praying and fasting and believing and still delay. When is my husband coming back? Delay. When am I going to get pregnant? Delay. When am I going to get this job? Delay. When am I going to get this miracle? Delay. When am I going to have my joy, my joy and laughter? Delay. It's like everybody's breaking through. When it comes to you, delay. And yes, still you are doing everything right. Praying, fasting, giving, sowing seeds, expecting. And you are hearing testimonies around you. And you are asking yourself, why the delay? And still God is watching. Your faith is under trial. Then you can go through a season of denial. It's like everything or everywhere or everything you plan or you attempt to accomplish. Rejected. Denial. Rejected. Denial, rejected, denial, rejection, rejection, disappointment, rejection, disappointment. And you are wondering, Lord, are you God? From January until now, denial, rejection, denial, rejection. What is this? Then why am I a Christian? Why do I pray? Why do I fast? Why these things? Faith under trial. And then you have also challenges of opposition and resistance every little inch of progress you want to make oppose resisted challenge oppose resisted challenges your faith is under trial would you still pray would you still fast would you still hold on to god would you still trust him would you still live a holy life would you still shun evil 
<laughs> it is well. Everybody goes through something. But one thing I've learned about God is if you take a stand for him in the face of your trial, like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, when they were trusting God and thinking they will not put them in the fire, burning furnace, and yet still, they heated. When you are expecting God for deliverance, they are heating the burning furnace seven times to push you into it. Yesterday, the Bible says that they said, we will not bow down to this grieving image. If we perish in the fire, let us perish, but I will still trust God. I will still trust God. I think Job chapter 15, 29 or so, he says, I know, I know my Redeemer lives. I know my Redeemer lives. I know my Redeemer lives. And for that reason, they are saying that if I perish, I perish, I will not bow down. I will not turn my back on God. Let the worst happen to me now. Let people ridicule me, laugh at me, mock at me. But I'll still hold on to God. That was Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And because they stood for God, God came through for them. The same Job chapter 14 verse 14 talks about the fact that I will wait until my change comes. I will wait. I will wait. I will wait. I will wait until what? My change comes. I will not lose confidence in God. I will not be discouraged. I will not give up hope. Maybe this is not the time. But I will wait. And because Job waited, the Bible gave, God gave him double for his trouble. Then the same Job 13, 15. says, though he slays me, yet will I praise him. Yet will I hope in him. Yet will I trust him. He slay me. He's allowing me to go through some processes and challenges. My expectations have not been met. This is not what I planned. This is not what I was thinking by the end of the year, things will go. But here I am. Unmet expectations. And some of us are so discouraged and disappointed. So disappointed. But it says that I'll wait. Can you wait until the, your change? Your change. Your change. Your change. Your change. Your change is coming tomorrow. So why are you giving up today? Your change is coming next week. Why are you giving up today? Do you know what God has in store for you? Weeping, crying, and sorrow may endure through the night. But joy, joy. The joy is coming in the morning. And your morning can be next week. Your morning can be tomorrow. Your morning can be next, the next new year. So why give up now? I'm speaking to you. Why are you so discouraged and so disappointed? You think God doesn't see and God doesn't hear and God doesn't know what you are going through and what you are feeling? The pain, the tears, the challenges, the trials you are going through, you think he doesn't? And you think God doesn't have a purpose for you? A plan? He says in Jeremiah 29 verse 11, I know, I know the thoughts I think towards you, thoughts of peace and not evil to bring you to an expected end. Can we trust God when our faith is under trial? Can we trust God? Can you trust God even when you feel your prayers have not been answered yet? Or God has not come through for you yet? 
Remember, delay doesn't mean denial. And therefore, I want you to be like Job. That there is hope for a tree, though it be cut down. That's Job chapter 7 verse 14. There's hope for a tree, though it be cut down. It will sprout up again and its new shoot will not fade off. There's so much hope. You have the gift of life. You are alive today. Believe and trust God and expect that he will come through. Micah chapter 7 verse 8. It says, Oh my enemies, do not rejoice over me. The fact that my prayers have not been answered, do not rejoice over me. But the fact that I'm still going through some challenges and some warfare and some demonic attacks and some hindrances and some setbacks and some delay and some stagnation and I'm going through some attacks, my enemies, don't rejoice over me. For when I fall, I will surely bounce back. I will rise again. And in when I am in the tunnel of darkness, my God will be a light unto me. So don't rejoice over me. I'll rise again. You didn't see me rise yesterday, but I'll rise tomorrow. You didn't see me rise last week, but I'll rise this week. You didn't see me rise this year, but I'll rise next year. My enemies, please don't conclude on this issue. Because my present situation is not my permanent conclusion. This is not how it will always be. And that's what I'm saying that if God has not come through for you yet, don't turn your back on Jesus. For he has been faithful. He has been good. Though he slays me, yet will I praise him. I know my Redeemer lives. I'll wait until my change comes. Can you be like Job? There's another year coming. Would you trust him? Do you know the fantastic, fabulous, wonderful, glorious things he has for you? And therefore, don't allow the devil to deceive you into thinking why, you see, it was the devil who had entered into Job's wife and telling Job, curse God and die. For, forget about God. Forget about your dreams. Forget about your marital restoration. Forget about getting married. Forget about being pregnant. Forget about starting your business. Forget about you breaking through and getting your immigration papers. Forget it. It's over. God couldn't help you and he can't help you and it can never be done. You are nothing. You will ever become nothing. You are useless. Your situation is hopelessly helpless. And some of us have allowed these whisperings and evil suggestions and imaginations and words from this demonic spirit to cause us to be feeling so down, so depressed, so discouraged, disoriented, despaired, disillusioned. Some people are feeling like even committing suicide. It's... it's it's like the whole world is coming crashing at you because you have forgotten that you have one of the greatest blessings life health Christ when you have Jesus Christ and you have life and health though he slays me I'll rise again there's hope for a tree it will rise again. Cut down a tree. It will sprout up again. I was blessed by it. It's on YouTube. The interview of uh, Ruth Graham. If a righteous man's daughter could be allowed to go through this, so she will come out and become a testimony. Four marriages. Four. Even the stigma. Forget about even the pain and, and the hurt. She went through these four marriages and still didn't work out. But look at the, the 
the way people, the stigma, the stigmatization, the stigmatization of how people will see her. Oh, your father is Billy Graham and look at what you are going through. It's not easy. But yes, still God was in it, working all things out. We all have challenges. We all have problems. Unmet goals and visions and dreams and unanswered prayer. But it should never take us away from God. Because you never know the providential purpose and plan of God for your life. And what time, the Bible says in his own time, he makes all things beautiful. All things are working together. You may not understand it. And God was telling me today, son, sometimes you don't even understand yourself. You don't understand yourself. Because sometimes God can be dealing with you so much that you don't even understand yourself, let alone for people to understand you. So it's okay. It's okay when sometimes people don't understand you. Because some of us are still wrestling to even understand ourselves and what we are going through. And what God is doing in our lives. We don't understand it. So how can you think you understand me when I myself don't even understand what's going on? I don't need your validation and your acceptance and your confirmation and your approval. All you have to be interested is, Lord, that I may please you. That I may what? Please you and live my life to please you. Forget about people. Forget about, I said, read my lips, forget about people. Forget about people. And some of you, it is through your trials that you realize that you couldn't continue to put your confidence and trust and hopes in man. They will disappoint you. Plain and simple. Curse is anyone who puts his trust in man. That is the word. The scriptures cannot be broken. If you put, and some of you have learned it the hard way. Not because your husband wasn't good, wasn't a great person, but your confidence was too much in man. So the man disappointed you only for you to learn to trust God for that marriage. You never thought he could cheat on you. It is happening. You never thought he would treat you this way. It is happening. You never thought you lose this job or they'll kick you out or sack you. And now you've worked for them 10 years, 15 years. And they say, we are sorry, we have to let you go. Just like that. Just like that. Something you've labored and fought for and invested your time in, it can slip through your hands just like that. Everything is vanity, 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 vanity. All is vanity. This is the whole matter. Fear God and obey his commandment. For this is the whole duty of man. Put your trust in God for every other thing. is vanity. You better learn it and learn it so fast, quickly. Otherwise, some of you will be so sh shaken by the disappointment you will experience by placing your confidence on institutions, organizations, and parties, and government, and human beings, and friends, and families. Everything can fail you. But there's only one thing that cannot fail you. And I can recommend it for you as you prepare for the future. Your tomorrow, and then next year, and the years ahead. That nobody who puts their trust in God will ever be put to shame. No one, nobody who puts their trust in God will be put to shame. He will always be there. He will always be there. He's a father to the fatherless, a husband to the widow. A friend who stays closer than a brother. I encourage you not to feel disappointed and discouraged. For the Christian, there's hope for them. Every child of God who put their trust in the Lord, there's hope. Everybody thought Job's life was over, but they didn't know. The double, double, double blessings that God had in store for him. So tonight, I encourage you and I'm going to give you a prophetic direction. And do it in faith and it shall be well with you. That's all. Isaiah 41 verse 10, Isaiah 41 verse 10, the Bible says, Fear not, for I am with you. 
Be not dismayed, for I am your God. Fear not. Do not be afraid that you are too late. You are denied. You are rejected. You are abandoned. Your hopes are dashed. Nothing is happening. The marriage will never work out or because it didn't work out, your life is over. A relationship can be over, but life is not over. A relationship can be over, but life is not over. Life goes on and God may be having something greater, greater. You may have lost a job, but it is not over. You have no idea what God has in store for you. Something you lost, which was precious to you, you have no idea that something greater, more precious than what you lost is ahead of you. Fear not, so do not be afraid. For I am with you, be not dismayed. For I am your God. I will strengthen you. I pray for everyone hearing the sound of my voice and as the Spirit of the living God speaks to you today. Be strengthened. Be strong. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. I ask you to put on the whole armor of God. Be strong. Let the strength of God be infused in you, be injected into you, be impacted into you to equip you, enable you, energize you, revamp you, resuscitate you for those of you who are emotionally dying and in comatose. Be revived. Be revived. Let hope come alive. Let faith come alive. For we are not serving a dead God. We are serving a living God. Notwithstanding, regardless what you are facing, what you are going through, what you had, God is still in control. And when God is in control, everything must be under control. I pray for you. Let the strength of God strengthen you. And let every problem you are going through be under control in Jesus' name. I will help you. I will help you. I pray that you find help. May the Lord help you today. May the Lord help you today. You who are so discouraged, may the Lord help you by encouraging you. You who are so depressed, may the Lord help you and encourage you. You who are so down, may the Lord help you and inspire you. You who are so weak, may the Lord help you and give you back your strength. You who are, who, whose marriage is being torn apart, may the Lord help you and restore your marriage and your family. You who is financially entangled and financially down, may the Lord help you by supplying all your needs according to his riches and glory. You who is sick, may the Lord help you and heal you from all your sickness and diseases. You who are oppressed, afflicted, may the Lord help you and deliver you from the powers of darkness. Be delivered from the bondage of the devil. Whatever issue, problem, challenge, storms you are going through, receive help from heaven. Receive help from above. Receive help from Jesus. Lord Jesus, help your children. Help those who are drowning. Help those who are discouraged. Help those who are feeling defeated. Help those who are feeling hopeless. Help them, oh God, and bring them out. Turn their tears into cheers. They are mourning into dancing. They are weeping into laughter. Lord, help us. Help us. Whatever problem you are entangled in at your workplace, whatever challenges you are facing with a court case, Whatever issue you are facing with your son, daughter, your husband, may the help of God find you today, right now. And may the Lord begin to bring you out. May the Lord begin to bring you up and out. Up and out. Up and out. Up and out. For he says, I will help you. Receive a 24-hour help. Receive a 48-hour help. Before you exit this year, may the Lord help you. Before you exit this week, may the Lord help you. Before you exit this month, may the Lord help you. Before you exit this prayer line, receive help from Zion. Help from the Lord Jesus. Receive help. I will I hope I will uphold you. I will uphold you. There are times you are so downcast, so depressed, so worried, so anxious, and everybody has deserted you or cannot even identify with what you are going through. God says, I understand, and I will what uphold you. I will be there for you. I will uphold you with my right hand of righteousness. I pray. May the Lord uphold you. 
Whatever marital problem you are going to, may the Lord uphold you. Whatever financial problem you are going to, may the Lord uphold you. You may be listening to me at, on your sick bed. May the Lord uphold you. You may be going through some emotional breakdown. May the Lord uphold you. You may be facing some battle spiritually. May the Lord uphold you. May the angel of the Lord bear you up under their mighty wings, lest you dash your foot against every stone. May the Lord uphold you and bring you up and out. In the name of Jesus. There's hope for us. Because he lives, Jesus, we can face tomorrow. And the future is always brighter. The future of the Christian is always brighter. Like a shining star. Ever brighter as the day goes by. So shall be your report. I declare and declare and prophesy into your life. That the Lord Jesus will wipe away your tears and turn your sorrow into joy. Receive it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Listen to this prophetic direction. Hi. Join us every day for prayers and for deliverance. Every day, 11 p.m. Eastern Time, U.S. 11 p.m. Eastern Time, U.S. And also for those of you who are in London, it's going to be 4 a.m. London. And if you are in Europe, any part of Europe, it will be 5 a.m. Join us for our daily prayer, deliverance, and breakthrough prayers. You can join us by connecting to our YouTube Live and Facebook Live. We have two YouTube accounts. The first one is called Fresh Fire Prayer Line. Fresh Fire Prayer Line. So subscribe to Fresh Fire Prayer Line. And click the bell and you'll be notified whenever we meet for prayers. And also we have another account called KL Blessing. K-A-Y and L Blessing is E-L-B-L-E-S-S-I-N-G. KL Blessing. Subscribe to the key a blessing YouTube account and click on, on the bell and you'll be notified. And also you can follow us on Facebook, K a blessing. K a blessing. K A Y E L B L E S S I N G. K a blessing. Follow us also on Facebook. So do change um, um join us every day for prayers. Every day. For those of you in US, 11 p.m. Eastern Time. London, 4 a.m. And those of you in Europe, 5 a.m. For any further information about deliverance materials and books, go to our website, www.freshfireprayer.com. www.freshfireprayer.com. And you can purchase our materials from there. God richly bless you, and I look forward to seeing you today for prayers. I pray for you that whatever you are believing God for, may the Lord God Almighty wipe away the tears from your eyes may the lord remove shame from your life may the lord mend your broken heart and heal you may the lord restore whatever the devil has stolen from your life and may the lord open doors for you in the name of jesus every burden every challenges you are going through i want you to know that with prayer god is able to do the impossible i pray that the lord god almighty bring you deliverance and may the lord almighty deliver you from every spells every charms every hexes every attack of the enemy that is going on right right now in your life as i pray for you right now let the attack stop and cease in the name of Jesus. And for those of you believing God for a breakthrough, I come into agreement with you. Let there be miracles. Let there be a breakthrough. Let there be testimony. Let there be praise report. Before you even join us, you are going to come with a testimony because our God is awesome and is able to do all things. He's a way maker. He's a miracle worker. He's a promise keeper. He's a God who is able to divide the Red Sea and cause his people to walk on, on dry land. I So I prophesy in the name of Jesus, whatever blessing breakthrough you are believing god for may the lord answer you speedily in the mighty name of jesus christ be restored be healed be delivered i pray for god to restore your marriage in the name of jesus i ask the lord to restore your health i ask the lord to open the door for you to get your job i ask the lord god almighty to release a blessing in your family in the name of jesus those who are sick be healed right now 
be delivered right now, be restored right now in the name of Jesus. Doors that were shut before you, I command your closed doors to begin to be open and may you experience the favor of God. Whatever spell, whatever charm, whatever hexes that has been done against you to destroy you in the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Ghost, by the resurrection of the anointing, I break every yoke, I break every charm, I break every witchcraft off your life and I lose you by the power of the Holy Ghost. For the Bible says, whatever we lose on earth shall be loose in heaven. I command your release from every powers of darkness, from every curse, from every bewitchment, and from every shackles. I break the yoke of the enemy of your life, and I command your soul to escape as a bird out of the snares of the fowler. May the snare be broken, and I command your unconditional release right now. Receive your testimony. Receive your breakthrough this week. Receive your healing this week. I ask the Lord to restore your marriage, your family, your sons and daughters. Let them be covered. Let them be protected by the precious blood. May the blood preserve and protect you from all evil, from cancer, from diabetes, high blood pressure, from COVID, from premature death, from accident, from a, uh, uh, misfortune and adversity and calamity, any evil, any weapon that has been formed or fashion or designed against you, may the Lord cause you to escape the traps and the snares of your enemies. May your life be preserved by the Lord Jesus Christ. Join us today and your life will never be the same. This is Reverend K, a blessing. For more information, go to our website, www.freshfireprayer.com, www.freshfireprayer.com, and click and subscribe to the YouTube channel, Facebook channel, Fresh Fire Prayer Line, also K, a blessing, and follow us on Facebook, K, a blessing. God richly bless you. Bye. Hi, this is Reverend K, and once again, welcome to Fresh Fire Prayer Ministry. I'm here to recommend to you some deliverance, materials which will help you the bible says buy knowledge and sell it not buy knowledge and sell it not you have to re you have to discover in order to recover if you don't discover the mystery behind your misery you'll not be able to recover and possess or repossess your possession so knowledge is very vital in this day and age because what you don't know is what the enemy or your enemies will use against you and that's why the u.s spend huge sums of money using it for intelligence because they have to know what their enemies are planning against the u.s before they in order to overturn it cancel it frustrate it before their enemies can come against them so the bible says that we are not ignorant of the devices of the enemy so many people are looking for deliverance seeking for deliverance but they are very ignorant about the ways the devil operates and they keep on falling into the devil's trap and the devil keeps on getting them the first book i recommend to you is called spiritual diagnosis mind you you can get all these books on our website www.freshfireprayer.com www.freshfireprayer.com you can get it on a paper book or you can get it on ebook in the ebook when you buy it it will be emailed to you as an attachment and you can open it and get it you go to the website www.freshfireprayer.com the first book is spiritual diagnosis spiritual diagnosis is the first book i wrote after the lord revealed to me the way the enemy operates against humanity the way witchcraft operate, curses operate, demons operate. In this book, you will understand how the enemy operates. You are going to learn about the portals which the enemies or demons can enter into your body. You, you know how demons also operate. You also know how to keep your deliverance, how to keep, um, stay delivered. What can keep you from receiving deliverance? You know the different ways the enemy can attack you either through witchcraft either through curses either through spirit husband either through your name either through against your marriage this are this book was exposed to you anybody who want to know about deliverance and about the ways the demons and the witches operate how witches can hunt down your star how witches can um you turn you into scape scapegoat in order to destroy you this book will give you all the vital informations you need for your deliverance and it will help you body afflictions how many people are going through attacks on their body demonic visitation demons in, in, uh, visiting you which cascade goods evil soul ties i explained to you how all these things oppress asmodeus and osmodeus these are demons that breaks marriages and keep people single satanic spiders and spider web every time you experience a spider web in your life satanic monitors demons and witches monitoring you Evil altars and covenants that are affecting your body, are affecting your life. You learn all star hunters. 
demons and witches that are after your star and your glory and how they can pursue after your star to destroy you how to use the anointing oil how to anoint your house these are all uh, and how to do self deliverance this book spiritual diagnosis spiritual diagnosis the other one is called deliverance from blessing destroyers this book gives you 30 dreams that shows you that your blessings and your prosperity is under demonic and witchcraft attacks 35 prayer to cancel demonic dreams and, uh, and against your life are you have you been having evil dreams have you been having bad dreams do you understand the dreams do you know how to pray to reverse it to destroy it how to overcome the four major causes of the poverty you will discover what causes poverty and the 11 witchcraft activities 11 witchcraft activities to destroy your blessings and your destiny you also learn about the 16 demons that attack our finances prayers to overcome demonic operation against your blessings uh, prayers to uh, against witchcraft activities and nice spiritual element for your your blessings deliverance from blessing destroyers emergency prayers for marriage restoration, anybody going through marital problem, anybody wanting to get married, anybody wanting to know how to pray against witchcraft, against marine demons, against strange women, against household wickedness, against spouse, uh, spouse charms, against your marriage, and how to pray to preserve your marriage, get this book, Deliverance from Blessing Destroy, uh, Emergency Prayers for uh, Marriage Restoration, any marriage under attack, this is your book. Consuming Fire for Fire, this is the book that you need in order to teach you how to pray against the spirit husband, spirit wife, python spirit, leviathan spirit, witchcraft spirit, demonic spirit, strange woman, come against singleness, spirit of delay, spirit of uh, satanic embargoes, anything, anybody who is going through witchcraft, this is the book. And if you want to know how to pray against a witch, get this book and it will teach you how to pray against witchcraft and get your deliverance. Emergency prayers for marriage restoration. Emergency prayers. Urgent prayers. This urgent prayers against the strong man. This book will teach you how to pray against back to sender. Anybody who releases evil arrow against you, how to send it back to the sender. This um, book will also teach you how to pray to open every satanic padlock that has padlocked your destiny and your star. This book will teach you how to pray against the spirit of death, sicknesses, and diseases, especially cancer. And this book will also teach you how to pray for favor in um, for your life. And if you are dealing with any strong man, the spirit of Pharaoh that is holding you in bondage and captivity, this is the book you need. Emergency prayer for uh, urgent prayer against the strong man. Get this book and it will bless you. Touch not my anointed. If you don't want witches and wizards to mess you up, this is the book to get. And once you, you begin to use it, you will get, begin to get your deliverance from all the powers of darkness. Get, go to our website, www.freshfireprayer.com. www.freshfireprayer.com. Get these materials. Start reading them. Start praying these prayers in the midnight hour or every time you have and start praying them. Use these prayers and pray it and it will change your life and it will help you to fight against the powers of darkness and your life and your destiny will never be the same. Go to our website www.freshfireprayer.com www.freshfireprayer.com If you order the uh, ebook, you will get it within 24 hours uh, and we will email it to you as an attachment. If you order the paperback, you give us uh, four to five days and it will be emailed to you, uh, it will be sent to you and it will help you out to get your deliverance. God richly bless you. Bye.